This is the Galaxy Z Flip 5, Samsung's latest foldable designed to neatly tuck itself in half and slide right into your life. This year, it flaunts three big upgrades, along with a couple of minor ones, but I'll break down all of them for you and I'll even tell you if it's worth upgrading from your current Z Flip. Because you know, I'm nice like that. Let's start with what's likely the most talked about update to the Flip 5. It's Ultra AMOLED screen, which is now 3.4 inches big. Just to put that in perspective, the old Flip 4's outer screen was only 1.9 inches. So we're not talking about a tiny alteration here. This is a massive step for a Samsung Flip 4. You see the cover display is now morphed into something that's genuinely useful. I mean, it finally gets full functional widgets, giving you your weather updates, keeping tabs on your health, and reminding you of your calendar appointments. And yes, you can even send a text message right from that front screen with a full keyboard. However, the best part is that you can access a handful of apps directly from the front screen, including YouTube and Netflix. If I'm being completely honest, the screen is still relatively small for binge watching your favorite shows, but it's proven to be quite the companion for me in watching content on the go. Of course, not every app is ready for this screen size as developers need to tweak their applications for the smaller dimension. You can use Samsung's GoodLock app to get more apps to run on the cover screen, but just keep in mind that some of them will look really odd on it due to optimization issues. By the way, that larger screen makes a huge difference when it comes to taking selfies as well. Gone are the days of awkwardly trying to frame a shot on the previous Z Flip's tiny cover display. Now it's like having a proper viewfinder right at your fingertips, making it so much easier to take a quick snap. If you ask me, this is what the outer screen should have been like right from the start, because it encourages you to use the phone without even opening it. And that's something that wasn't possible on previous flip phones. Now let's move on to the second big change with the Flip 5, this new hinge, which I feel is actually more significant than the larger cover screen. Because let's face it, without a solid hinge, you're not gonna get that top-notch foldable smartphone experience. The hinge has to be on point every time. And luckily, this one is really good. Sure, Samsung flip phones have always had reliable hinges, but they used to have this two-axis design that bent the screen at a weird angle. When you folded it up, you'd see this gap between the two halves, and it wasn't the best look. Also, there was the issue of dust and lint getting in there, especially when the phone was in your pocket. But now, the Z Flip is rocking a multi-axis hinge, letting the phone snap shut completely flat. So that annoying gap is gone for good, and it leaves us with a thinner folded device slimming down from 0.67 to 0.59 inches. It's a change that's been a long time coming, and it's a big win in my opinion. I've also noticed that the hinge is a tad less stiff this time, making it easier to flip open and shut. And even though it's not as stiff, it hasn't lost any of its flexibility. You can still set the Flip 5 at just about any angle for flex mode, and it stays put without any struggle for balance. Now the third biggest highlight is all about the hardware running this thing. It's got the custom Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip with 8 GB of RAM, and it's every bit as quick as in the Fold 5 or S23 series. It might run a bit warmer in the Flip 5, maybe because there's less room for cooling stuff down, but it never really got excessively hot, even with those high graphic games. Apart from that, the base model now has 256 GB of storage, which is a nice step up from Flip 4's 128 GB. And it runs on Android 13 with Samsung's One UI 5.1.1, so it feels right at home with the Galaxy S23 lineup. Plus, being a Samsung top tier phone, you're locked in for four major OS upgrades, something not all brands are offering these days. Durability-wise, the Flip 5 features slightly newer Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protection both on the front and back while maintaining its IPX8 water resistance rating and strong armor aluminum frame. There are even some fresh paint jobs this year, like this signature mint color which I think looks really nice. When it comes to the cameras, the 12 megapixel dual sensor setup on the back and the 10 megapixel selfie camera are still the same, but they perform even better thanks to improved software processing. The photos are clear and sharp, the colors really pop, and the details are well preserved. Unfortunately, the phone doesn't have a telephoto lens like its big brother, the Fold 5, so it's not as versatile in that regard. But the ultra-wide sensor does let you fit a whole lot more into the picture. You can also shoot videos in 4K at 60fps, and they come out looking quite vibrant. Talking about vibrant things, the main 6.7-inch AMOLED display remains pretty awesome for watching videos or scrolling through Instagram and Twitter, oh sorry, I mean X, still getting used to that name change. 
On the other hand, the one thing I have got used to is the crease in the middle of the screen. It's definitely there, but it seems less noticeable now with that new hinge. You probably won't even see it unless you look at the screen from an angle. All right, so there's a lot to like about the Flip 5, but it's not perfect either. Take the battery, for example. It's stuck at 3700 mAh, same as the previous model. I was banking on that snappy new chipset to be a battery lifesaver, but the numbers aren't straying far from the Z Flip 4. It got me through a workday just fine, leaving about 15% to spare, but for a weekend getaway or a photo-heavy day, it doesn't cut it. Oh, and let's not forget, still no charging adapter in the box, which doesn't sit quite right with me for a phone that starts at 1 lakh rupees. As for the cameras, they're solid, but there's room to step up in terms of resolution and versatility. Then there's the cover screen, which is a big leap from the old Z Flip phones for sure, but it's hanging back at 60Hz refresh rate, not sprinting at 120Hz like the main screen. That being said, these issues aren't huge deal breakers in the face of what is clearly a fun and increasingly mature product. In fact, if your existing Flip is on its last hinge, upgrading to the Flip 5 for the larger external screen is a no-brainer. It's also a great option if you're looking to swap your standard smartphone for something that's a bit more unique. Either way, the Flip 5 introduces some of the most significant upgrades in Samsung's foldable narrative. And personally, I can't wait to see where they take it from here.